Hi, my name is Dr. Russell Blaylock, and I'm going to tell you about a commonly used sweetener. And what I'm going to tell you may upset you, it may shock you, but hopefully it's going to change your life for the better. The sweetener called aspartame, which I'm sure most of you've heard of, is now used in over 5,000 different food products, a number of medications, both prescription and over the counter, and a lot of beverages. But the deceit, the lies, and the flagrant abandonment of you and your family's safety is now legendary. And it's all a matter of public record. If we look back in the history of the development of this product, it began at G.D. Serrell Pharmaceutical Company. And it was discovered by one of the research scientists by the name of James Schlatter in 1965. At the time, he was working on an anti-ulcer drug, which was made of several component naturally occurring amino acids linked by what was known at the time as a powerful poison called methanol. As the story goes, he inadvertently had licked his fingers and he noticed that it was extremely sweet. He brought it to his supervisor and the supervisor looked at this and said, well, maybe we can develop this further and use it as an artificial sweetener. Now at the time, saccharin had lost its approval because of some questions about carcinogenicity. So the food industry was looking for a replacement sweetener at the time. Now they discovered that this product was about 150 times sweeter than an equal amount of sugar. So over the next decade, the G.D. Serrell Company scientists conducted over 11 experimental studies to prepare themselves for presentation to the FDA to get the product approved. And it was eventually approved in 1974 for use only in dry foods. But the approval then was quickly withdrawn. And that was based on an investigation that was a very extensive investigation done by Dr. Adrian Gross, who was the senior toxicologist for the FDA at the time. He studied not only the studies that had been done by the G.D. Serrell Company, but he visited the laboratories and he interviewed the researchers themselves. So it was a very extensive and intensive review. Dr. Gross had analyzed these 11 studies and it came under the title the Sierra Task Force Report in 1975. Three of the studies he gave to Jerome Bressler, also an investigator for the FDA, and they found that there were major problems in these studies. In 1980, based on some concerns expressed by the neuroscientist Dr. John Olney, particularly concerning the high number of brain tumors found in the G.D. Serrell study, and an attorney by the name of Jim Turner, they approached the FDA and asked for another hearing. The FDA agreed and held the public board of inquiry hearing. But when we look at this, what we find is that they did not allow pertinent material to be entered into this public board of inquiry that was discovered by Dr. Adrian Gross. In 1981, new director Arthur Hall Hayes was appointed commissioner of the FDA and he approved the product over the objections of the neuroscientists and the pathologists who were on this public board of inquiry. And these neuroscientists and pathologists' main objection was the high number of brain tumors found in the animals exposed to aspartame. In 1983, Commissioner Hayes approved aspartame for use in beverages over their objections. Two months later, after he initiated this approval, he left the FDA to accept a position as the senior medical advisor to a Serrell's PR firm called Burston Marsteller. Now, when it was approved in 1981 for dry products and again in 1983 for beverages, it was based on the idea that consumers would not be consuming more than 20 milligrams per kilogram per day of the aspartame. Now, shortly after this product hit the consumer market, it became obvious that people were consuming a much higher level of this than they had estimated, what is called the Acceptable Daily Intake, or ADI. So what they did is they raised the ADI from this 20 milligrams per kilogram per day to 50 milligrams per kilogram per day. In other words, two and a half times higher, a level that significantly increased the risk to children and especially small babies because of their small size. 
Now today, studies have shown that people are consuming as much as 150 milligrams per kilogram or even higher. Now what I'm going to do in this discussion, I'm going to divide it into four basic parts. Number one, we're going to talk about the cancer connection to aspartame, special dangers to pregnant women and children, dangers to everyone else, and how you can protect and repair the damage to yourself and those you love. Now it is important to keep in mind that even though I'm going to discuss a lot of things, this is not an exhaustive discussion of the dangers of consuming this product. It is only the worst of the problems. 